Hi Graham, I'm Patrick. Hello Patrick. Fine, and you? I'm fine, thank you. Graham, you began your career in the early uh, 70s? Yeah, probably the late 60s. Yes, late 60s. With the Houses Shakers? No, before that I had a band called The Wild Bunch in a, probably about 1968. And the piano player, Trevor Hawkins, he now lives in Australia. Uh, he left to join Shake and Stevens. So I had, I had no band. And then somebody said to me, how Shakers were looking for a new singer. So I went for audition and then uh, I joined the House Shakers. Uh, six months after I joined them, we, we come over to France to tour with Jim Vincent. Where? To France. France? Yeah. My first uh, tour with the House Shakers was, was Jim Vincent. Yes. Um, yeah, we toured in France. When Jean Vincent came Nin in France? 1970. 1970, yeah. okay. And I you spoke with him? Yes, he d I drove him in my car in England. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I introduced him to my mother. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I was asked to drive him. I had a, a 59 Chevrolet. And I introduced him, I say to my mother, um, at this time we were hanging out with rockers and bikers uh, around the Ace Cafe in London, is that yes, correct? that's right, yeah. Tell yeah. me about this time. Uh, what well, was your bikes? I had a, the first bike I had was a small bike called a James. And then I got a 650 PSA and then a uh, 500 Norton Dominator. Uh, I had a Venison and uh, a couple of other bikes, you know. Uh, Royal Enfield Cafe Racer, uh, 700. Uh, sadly, I haven't got them now. They're worth lots of money. <laughs> how, how much you sold this? Um, 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> what a pity. I know. I know. I, I sold a lot of American cars very cheap. I had a... I had an Aston Martin. <laughs> I had an Aston Martin DB6. <clears throat> I, sold, I sold for five thousand pounds. Now yeah. they're worth one hundred and fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a bargain for the buyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I saw a film called The London Rock and Roll Show. Yes. It was in Wembley Stadium in uh, nineteen seventy-two. That's correct. We have a lot of artists like Bodhidle, Chuck Berry, and Screaming Lord Such. Yep. Okay? Do I have any comments? And you sang Biba Palula yep. uh, to open the festival, I believe. Yeah, as so, a tri tribute to Jane Vince. So, uh, so you were the younger one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I met uh, Bill Haley in the comments and uh, Rudy Pompelli, the saxophone player. Yeah. He invited me down the pub with the comments for a beer, you know. Yeah, my father, he, he was a, uh, he liked Bill Haley, you know, my dad. Yeah. Can we say this festival represents the beginning of rock and roll revival? Yes, that's correct. Yes? Yeah. In the audience, I remember, there was a melting pot of people. Rockers, teddy boys and hippies. Yeah. yeah. Was it a special time? No, it was just everybody was together. Like, there was no trouble, no problems. No problems. No, the hippies, rockers and teddy boys. It was fun. <laughs> Then, the whole shakers were recalled the Hellraisers, okay? Yes. A few years later. Yes, correct. Then you split up in uh, 1976 yeah. and joined Matchbox and uh, resulted in success. In 77. 77, okay. You created the buzz with Buzz Buzz. Yeah. Am I right? That's correct. <laughs> You remember? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Very well. Very well. You brought the house down with Rockabilly River. Yeah, I think so, yeah. The album was called Matchbox. Yeah. And it was one of the best albums of revival of all the time. 
we were in 1979, okay? 1980. We started doing the television shows then. Did you play with some legendary American rockers when they went on tour in England? Yes. 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 Who? We went with uh, Matt Curtis. Matt Curtis. And uh, Ray Campy. Ray Campy. And uh, Charlie Gracie. How many records did you sell around the world? You know? About six million. Six million. In 1980, you took part at the legendary festival Blue Sweat Shoes. That's correct. In England. They made a film with it. Yeah. Tell me about this memory. Uh, well, uh, these producers approached us and said they wanted to do a, a movie about the rock and roll scene and how it's become uh, very popular again. So uh, we at that time, we worked with uh, Carl Perkins, Matt Rocks and Carl Ferguson and Bo Diddley. So, so they decided to call it Blue Sweet Shoes from Carl Perkins' song and put everybody that was still alive into this movie. And uh, it became a very uh, famous movie on the, on the rock and roll scene. And the yeah, atmosphere? Yes. Oh, yes. Very good. Yeah. I remember you were all dressed in black leather yeah. and you sang Cruising. Cruising of Gene Vincent. You took a pose, left leg extended. That's correct, yeah. It's a far away look. Like Gene. You were Gene at this moment. Okay? The atmosphere was great. The room was crowded. Yeah. A legendary gig for you. <laughs> Nowadays, there are a lot of new bands in Europe and a lot of new festivals. Yeah. Are there any new bands you like? There's quite a lot of them I like. Yes, yeah. Ooh. new bands. I like a band called Furious from uh, Furious. Yeah, and I like uh, I like a band called the Spunny Boys. Spunny, Spunny Boys, French yeah. French band. Yeah. And yeah. There's a very good bassist. Oh, I work, I sang with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remy. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we I got some very some favorite bands. I I like hearing the young guys. Yeah. Rock and roll goes on. Matchbox spirit goes on. Thank you very much, Ralph. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you.